My theme in this series has been uh, feeding on manna, God's word, taken from Psalms 119. The title of my message today is God's promise holds my life. God's promise holds my life. Now that's a very bold statement to make in these days. When there's so many things just going wrong, it seems like we are losing control. Um, yet, God's promise should hold everyone who claims the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Taken from Psalms 119 verses 81 to 88 in the last section, we saw the psalmist begins by acknowledging that God is his maker. God is his maker. In this section, let me just say it outward, uh, up front, he's going to acknowledge that God is able to sustain him with God's strength. Well, let's look uh, how the psalmist breaks down this word to us. As it is a practice, I just want to read the text in entirety, taken from, uh, this is the, now calf, uh, from verse 81, Psalms 119, uh, verse 81 to verse 88. So I'm going to read the text in full. So if you'd bear with me, Psalms 119, verses 81 to 88. The psalmist writes, my soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. My eyes long for your promise. I ask, when will you comfort me? For I become like a wineskin in the smoke, yet I have not forgotten your statutes. How long must your servant endure? When will you judge those who persecute me? The insolent have dug pitfalls for me. They do not live according to your law. All your commandments are sure. They persecute me with falsehood. Help me. They have almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. In your steadfast love, give me life, that I may keep the testimonies of your mouth. You know, I'm reading the portion of scripture, may God add a blessing to it. I just hope we will open our mind to the truth that is before us. There is so much depth in each of this section, and all we can do is even hardly scratch the surface. But there are three very simple things from this passage that stands out to me. And I just want to give it to you that you may follow along with it. One is a troubled soul. Troubled soul, verses 81 to 83. Then I want us to go down to a trying situation, verses 84 to uh, verse 87. And then thirdly, we want to look at a trusting saint, verse 88. Very simple yet profound and very deep. Let's break it up and see what God is saying to you and me today. First we come to a troubled soul. I don't know about you, but we live in troubled times. Everywhere you look seems to be some kind of trouble. Health, family, friends, you name it. There is trouble everywhere. It doesn't stop there. There's trouble in the weather. There's trouble under the earth where we see volcanoes spewing out lava. There's trouble in the oceans where the abundance of fish are beginning to dissipate. So there's so many things happening around us. We live in troubled times. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I feel like crying, when will it stop? When will this pandemic stop? Will it ever stop? 
You can feel the psalmist's despair and his frustration. Disappointment. I don't know about you, but sometimes I find that I feel the despair, the frustration, the disappointment. But when you look at the psalmist, he seems to have an anchor that he'll never let go. So that encourages me, and that's why I want to say, let's track with the psalmist and find that anchor as we navigate these troubled times. He started with a troubled soul. A troubled soul. You know, when your soul is in trouble, there is very few things, if any, that can bring that calmness. Just like this pandemic has caused so much trouble for people, so much fear, and quite a few people have succumbed to suicide, finding a quick way out. Here we see the psalmist, he's a troubled soul. So what does the troubled soul need? He needed revival. He needed revival. First we see his soul was fainting. He was looking for the work of God. Look at verse 81. He says, My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. Now, people, this is a biggie. We put great hope in our politician. They come around with great promises. As soon as the election is done and they've got their position, sometimes you never hear from them until the election time rolls around. They seem to have disappeared. And all the great promises they'd given seem to have disappeared with them. The psalmist does not turn to the government he does not turn to other uh, fellow human beings. He turns to God. My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. Maybe the psalmist has a secret that he is willing to share with us. What would that secret be? God will always fulfill his promises. He will always fulfill his promises. Today, people laugh at us as Christians. They said, don't you Christians say that Jesus is coming again for you folks? How many years that has been? Over 2,000 years. So you guys paid for a pie in the sky that really is not there. That hurts. Yeah, that begins to create doubt. Lord, are you there? When will you come back? Look at the troubles we are in. But the psalmist has found an anchor. You see, his soul was fainting. He was looking for a work of God, not of men. He says, my soul long for your salvation. I hope in your word. You see, the biblical context must always determine what kind of salvation the psalmist has in mind. There is, of course, the salvation from sin. Its penalty, its power, its